Hunter Biden is back in the news. I'll bet you missed him. This time, it's because of emails showing that a top Chinese Communist Party leader wanted to meet with him to, guess what, to talk some business. The emails were sent in 2013, around the time Hunter accompanied then Vice President Joe Biden on a trip around Asia that included, of course, China. It's not clear whether the meeting actually happened, but if it did, it would just be another item in the Biden family's litany of corruption. With us to discuss that tonight is Eric Eggers. He's the vice president of the Government Accountability Institute and author of the book, Fraud, How the Left Plans to Steal the Next Election. And we recommend Eric's book to you highly. Thanks for being with us, Eric. I want to just start with this, the latest uh, revelation about Hunter Biden. I mean, this reminds us, it seems like we can't get away from it, about what this is all about. It, it is a, a corrupt crime family, the Bidens, and there is no escaping it, uh, but there sure is a, a massive cover-up around them. Yeah, Hunter Biden, I think, represents a lot of things to the American people. He's sort of a Rorschach test, depending upon where you're coming from, from an ideological perspective. I think you and I, Lou, and the people that are watching this program See Hunter Biden as a classic example of a dual system of justice. Uh, remember, the fact that he finally was convicted on charges only happened because a very smart judge quashed the sweetheart deal that would have prevented Hunter Biden from being prosecuted for real crimes, including potentially uh, violating the Foreign Agent Registration Act, which is, I think, the real story. And that's what these latest revelations, these emails from his Chinese business partners the day after he flies to China with his then vice president father, Joe Biden, aboard Air Force Two. And he's getting emails and questions like, hey, how did it go? And we'd like to do more business. And then 10 days later, Hunter signs his own sweetheart deal, maybe the OG sweetheart deal, where he gets this billion dollar plus joint venture fund with the Chinese government. And so I think the American people see Hunter Biden, see the fact that he's got no business acumen to speak of. Everything he's gotten, including lenient judicial findings, are because of his last name. And so I think that while some people may want to celebrate the fact that he's been convicted of these gun charges, I think the real fact and the real problem that's posed to America's national security interests are the fact that Hunter Biden, because of his last name and because of his association with Joe Biden, was able to help the Chinese government and other enemies of the United States acquire sensitive technology and make money off of it. That's the real story. That's what the Bidens have done. And that is the true scandal this century. So the scandal, without question, I mean, uh, you and, and Peter have been uh, covering this with brilliantly, uh, and, and now we have congressional committees that have been investigating it uh, persistently, uh, but it doesn't seem like there's any movement right now on Capitol Hill. Give us your thoughts about where those investigations are in your judgment. So I guess it depends on uh, how you like to view the world, Lou. Some people would suggest that the fact that the investigations are ongoing is keeping the information in the news. And at the end of the day, ironically, you know, when Hunter Biden was getting was trying to get his deal, uh, the prosecutor was asked by the judge, well, what should the remedy be? And the prosecutor said, well, it's the political process. And I would say that the, the one smart thing that the congressional committees are doing is keeping this information in the news by having these drips of information. And so it does make it relevant for the American people with a potential political outcome in jeopardy in November. Remember, Lou, that because of what happened with Twitter and the censoring of the laptop four years ago, the American people were not able to vote on Joe Biden relative to the context of his association with Hunter Biden's business dealings. They were, they were kept from that information by big tech and the FBI and other censorship mechanisms. But now four years later, the American people can actually maybe make a decision based on what they think Joe Biden knew and how much money he made as a result of it. The New York Times actually confirms this and that poll they did a few months ago, the one link between electoral outcomes and people in these swing states was, do you think Joe Biden made money off of Hunter Biden's business deals? When people think that Joe Biden made money off of it, they vote the other way. And I think this information, the more we can connect Joe Biden to these business deals, like putting him on Air Force yeah. Two with Hunter Biden, I think helps accomplish that goal. Absolutely. It also is helpful to understand how the 2020 election was stolen. Uh, and uh, that brings us to your book uh, on fraud, 
uh, and how the, the, the Marxist left wants to uh, steal the next election. Uh, how, give us a sense of how they're doing right now. Are they going to achieve their goals or are they going to be frustrated? Lou, I sure hope not. I mean, I think we both hope not, right? We've lived through this already. Uh, and, and thank you for mentioning my book. You are so kind. You're actually the first person to have me on television when my book came out, Fraud, How the Left Plans to Steal the Next Election, which came out in August of 2018, by the way. And you and I had conversations about how vulnerable America's electoral systems were. We talked about the problems with voting rolls and how one in eight voter registrations were wrong and how the same people that fund lawyers to keep America's voter registrations from being vulnerable also fund groups that funnel as many people through those holes as possible. And then what happened? COVID happened. And the weakest part of our electoral system, mail-in balloting, became the most prominent way we cast ballots. And we were told, rather than being able to raise reasonable questions about accuracy and validity, we were told, oh no, it was the most secure and competent election ever, end of discussion. And if you dare raise questions about it, as you and others did, uh, you were labeled treasonous and traitorous and potentially threatened with jail time. So, uh, you know, that's where we are. And then, so I think all those same vulnerabilities exist largely throughout the country, except for in Georgia, where they actually did pass meaningful election, re election reforms, which, by the way, they were threatened with massive corporate boycotts, and they lost the Major League Baseball All-Star game as a result of it because of how right. angry the woke left was when Georgia passed common sense reforms. And so, you know, I think a lot of those vulnerabilities exist, except for now what the Biden administration has done is they've leveraged and weaponized the federal government in one of their first executive orders. We now have groups like HUD and the Department of Education and the Department of Agriculture, which if you wanna get welfare, you're gonna get registered to vote. This is what the Biden administration has decreed. Uh, if you wanna get Pell Grants on college campuses, you can earn them by helping to register people to vote on college campuses. So they're weaponizing the federal government to act as a get out the vote operation for the Biden administration. Uh, so it's a new tactic, but I think people are so fed up with the reality of what a Biden presidency looks like. It may not be enough to overcome all the efforts to, to cheat and steal. Well, we certainly hope that that will be the case. Uh, I wonder at this point uh, if there is anything that the Republicans can actually do uh, because we're, we're down to, yeah, we've got just a little over four months here. And the next thing we know, uh, we have an election. I don't know if there's enough time to actually put in place defenses uh, and, uh, and watchers to make certain that, that uh, 2020 doesn't happen all over again. What do you think? It's a very real concern, but look, I think we're approaching the 4th of July holiday. It's a time where we wanna kind of revel in the patriotic ideals and things that make America great. Um, I think we've done a lot to be proud of as this country. And I think when people think about what our past looks like, and they compare that with what the present administration is, I think all you can do is just continue to highlight how vulnerable the elections are, what reasonable reforms look like, the fact that the Biden administration recently granted pathways to citizenships for up to 500,000 spouses of current citizens who might be in this country illegally, I think will not help because I think we'll add to the confusion that maybe some of these groups that try to get these non-citizens to vote, uh, they may have one fewer obstacle in place just in terms of public awareness. So I think the more we can raise awareness of, hey, here's the, the issues, here's what common sense solutions look like. And oh, by the way, um, forget about efforts to cheat. What about just like voting on the merits of what the last four years have looked like? You know, we just released a report, Lou, at the Government Accountability right. Institute about the ways in which the Biden administration just signed into law a bill that lets trial lawyers charge exorbitant fees on the backs of Marines who've been wounded and harmed because of the Camp Lejeune scandal. You know, that's one example where here you have Marines who have served their country admirably, yet I think the money that they rightfully are owed is now being diverted to one of the more reliable voting blocks for Democrats as a result of this legislation. You know, those are the kinds of things that the more American people know about them, I think the more likely they are to not vote for Joe Biden in November. Joe Biden and his regime are an absolute disgrace to the United States. It's a, it is a slur on this nation and our heritage uh, that he is in that Oval Office. We thank you so much, Eric. Thanks for being with us here and all the very best. Eric Eggers, thank you.